What's up? It's Robert from Existence First, mental training for a modern world. In today's training, we're going to be talking about how to tell the difference between someone who knows what they're talking about and someone who doesn't. In other words, how to spot charlatans. I've always loved that word charlatan, and not just because it rolls off the tip of your tongue, but, well, I guess probably because it rolls off the tip of your tongue. But actually, it's really important to spot charlatans because this is a mental uh, this is a mental self-defense technique. This is how you don't get duped into believing things that are not true. So what inspired this topic today was I was listening to the Ty Lopez show. It's a podcast. And this doctor was being interviewed, Dr. Martin Blazer. He wrote a book on microbes. I think it's called Missing Microbes. And what he argues is that modern day antibiotics have been overused and they've caused uh, the human body's natural bacteria to decrease. And one of the interesting points that he makes is that during the process of birth, as the baby goes through the birth canal, they actually acquire some of the bacteria in that birth canal through, by passing through it. And that those bacteria are not acquired during C-section because in C-section, as you know, the abdomen is cut and the, and the baby's pulled out. They don't go through the birth canal. So in this conversation, the interviewer is uh, having an exchange with this doctor. Um, and the interviewer, I believe, is also a doctor, but I can't remember if he's a medical doctor or not. I'm not trying to bash the interviewer here, but he, I think he kind of makes the mistake of, of making statements on a subject that he, that the other guy knows way more about. Okay, so let's find out. Well, it's so, many, so many things are happening simultaneously, and they're washing babies <clears throat> tremendously. They're washing off a lot of the natural bacteria. Oh yeah, it's I see. There's I see these moms that are like germ freaks, and I always tell them like, let him eat the dirt, let him pick up stuff, let him suck on his fingers dirty, because by the more you wipe him, the more you clean him, the, yeah. the less likely he's exposed to these early pathogens that you yeah eat. you know i i think that the dirt bacteria aren't that important i think what's important are the bacteria you get from your mom the bacteria that are on your skin the ones that humans have had for a million years that are disappearing i think those are the important ones the the ones you, you get from the dirt they don't last very long in you either okay. it's just like the probiotic it's so that's a good example of making distinctions and knowing different types of bacteria and knowing not only different categories but how those in a very practical way are different he's saying that the dirt bacteria is kind of like the probiotics that you take it like it comes out in your poop the next day pretty much they get very different bacteria and that just that small time exposure of minutes coming out well it's not labor actually takes hours usually well, yeah. well, right. well I'm, I'm based in it on my wife was pretty quick <laughs> so there he's excited about oh yeah my wife was is an example and, and i'm familiar with it but he's essentially saying that i have one example or i'm basing my statement off of one example whereas the the other guy, the doctor, is uh, explaining sort of uh, what most cases are like. So an example of a charlatan is, um, you know, well, my friend, so-and-so, and they're basically referring to one case versus an expert or someone who knows what they're talking about usually has many, many cases that they've seen. So then later the interviewer cracks a joke that, uh, everybody better avoid c-sections and then the doctor comes back with a great point which demonstrates his lack of black and white thinking it shows that the doctor understands both sides that it's not an extreme issue he has a very balanced view so here's what that sounds like yeah well for those of you watching make sure you don't have a c-section <laughs> well again <laughs> unless people you... weren't there there are absolute reasons for c-sections but it's gone it's yeah but, but it's now gone through the roof there is lots of people that don't really need it but they're like it's easier it's you know the doctor convinced them because i, I truly believe there's some doctors that are there for the money it's kind of like see that you know my wife says she sees that a lot in the dental world where it's like you don't really need a crown but let's give you a crown 
and this poor interviewer i don't think he did very well in this podcast because he now he's stooping down to the level of victim mentality victim frame and talking about how doctors overcharge for these unnecessary things and it's in no way a logical rebuttal to what the doctor said which is that there are some reasons there are some times when a c-section is absolutely necessary and reasonable and then this dude comes back with you know yeah but i think doctors overcharged like what does that have to do with anything you know and for the last point i'll point out that earlier in the podcast the uh, doctor was talking about statistics on c-sections so let me play that excerpt and it demonstrates someone who knows their numbers more likely knows what's going on Sections used to be five percent of births, ten percent today in the United States. It's, it's thirty-two percent of birth. One baby out of three is born by C-section. Yeah. In China, in Shanghai, it's fifty percent. In wow. in Brazil, in in Rio, it's like eighty percent. Okay, so let's summarize really quick. How do you tell someone who knows what they're talking about? Number one, they make distinctions. This type or that type. If you ask a star basketball player, how do you put spin on the ball? He might come back and say, well, what do you mean? Backspin, side spin, this spin, forward spin. Like there's a, an expert has so many distinctions and that's a function of number two, being familiar with lots and lots of cases, not just one simple example, not just, oh, my friend, this, my wife, my husband. Yeah, I know someone who did, yeah. No, you need to be in front of many, many, many examples. That's how you make the distinctions. Number three, having a balanced view, seeing both sides and not having an extreme view. I don't know why so many people these days like have extreme views on the politicians in office. You know, they say things like, oh, we got to get this person out of office, anybody but this person. And it just sounds like they really don't know the issues. I'm much more likely to trust someone who sounds very neutral and says things like, you know, well, that uh, this politician, their foreign policy is such and such a way. I think the consequence of that is X, Y, Z. Um, but their management of the budget, I really like because I think that what it's doing is creating blah, 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 and blah, blah. So seeing positives and negatives and speaking in terms of consequences. People who don't know what they're talking about usually just make it general, they make it extreme, and they make it emotional. Oh yeah, we gotta get this person out of office. I can't believe they let him in office, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's very obvious to me who knows what they're talking about. That's all for today's training. Comment below what's your favorite way of finding out whether someone knows what they're talking about or doesn't know what they're talking about. Until next time, think deeply and put your existence first.